we have learned that redox reaction is basically just a chemical reaction that involves the transfer of electrons between two chemical substances. Whoever loses the electrons, we say that it undergoes a process of oxidation. And whoever gains the electrons, we say it undergoes the reductions. This is why we say that we learn it through oil rig. And these things wouldn't happen without any professionals. And this professional is what we call as agents. Like us. If you want to buy insurance, you look for insurance agents. If you want to buy property, you look for property agents. And now, we're going to look at what is the secret agents in our chemistries. So let me introduce you two of the agents. Their names are oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Just by looking at their name, I believe you will guess what would they do. So oxidizing agent basically will help us to oxidize other substances. In other words, it will cause the other substance to undergo oxidations. And itself will undergo reductions. So it means that it will cause the other substance to lose the electrons. And itself will gain the electrons. How bad is this agent? So now we have reducing agents. So he is going to help us to reduce other substance. Means that if we cause other substance to undergo the process of reductions. Means that if we cause other substance to gain electrons, but itself undergoes oxidations. Means that if we lose the electron, so how kind is our reducing agents? So in all of movies, the agents have their own fancy name like 007 for Hitman. We also have the name for oxidizing agent, namely Horn 67, and our reducing agent is going to be named SM2. So now let us illustrate with two chemical substances, namely A and B. So if now A lose the electrons, so we know whoever lose the electron will undergo the process of oxidations. Meanwhile, the electron lose must be received by someone. So let's say B receive the electrons. So we can say that B undergoes a process of reductions. But the thing here is, because of A lose the electrons, so it will cause B to receive the electrons. So it's why we can say that A is releasing agents. Because A causes B to undergo the process of reductions, which is the receiving of electrons. Meanwhile, we also can say that B is oxidizing agent. Why? because it causes A to lose the electrons. So let's explore some of the common oxidizing agents and reducing agents. In order to become a good oxidizing agent, we know it must undergo the process of reductions. So reduction is the gain of electrons. So in order to be good in gaining the electron, you must have a very high electronegativity, just like the halogens. So now we have a few substances like dichromate 6, magnet 7, nitric acid, oxygen, and halogens. So how do you memorize it is don't make noise on holiday. Meanwhile, we have some of the common reducing agents. In order to be a good reducing agent, you must be undergo the process of oxidation. But oxidation means that you are losing electron. In order to be good in losing electron, or we call donate electrons, you must be like a metals, which have a very high electron positivity. Some of the common ones we have in our syllabus are sulfur, metals, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. So how do you remember this one, or how do you memorize? You just remember is RSM. Reduce SM means reduce social media. Or you can remember of SMSH, shake my strong hand. Let's explore our oxidizing agents one by one, but don't forget it's don't make noise on holiday. First with dichromate 6, we know it will undergo the process of reductions. Di means 2, chrom means chromium, and then ATE means that there is oxygen binded together. The Roman 6 tell us the charges for our metal. For this case, it's going to be positive 6 for chromiums. So let's write it down the chemical equations of Cr2O7. 
and then we know chromium is positive 6 we have 2 of the positive 6 ion here plus together with 7 times we know oxygen is going to have negative 2 charges right then after that we find what is the net charges for this polyatomic ion so we have 12 minus 14 so in the end we have negative 2 so this way we can say that this is going to be a 2 negative since this one undergo the process of reductions mean in the end it will lose the oxygen to become chromium 3 ion so this is the general idea in order to balance off everything we write down our general idea first then think of how to balance can you see at our left hand side we have oxygen but right hand side we have no oxygens just remember if you want to balance off oxygen you always think of water which is h2o you can remember like water and oxygens are interrelated we rely both of them to survive so we're going to add water at our right hand side to balance the oxygens but after adding the water now is the problem of left hand side have no hydrogens if there's no hydrogen we add hydrogen ion to balance off so now it looks everything are right all the elements are balanced now we're going to balance the number so can you see that here we have the two chromiums but here only have one so we're going to balance off with two chromium at the right then after that you see we have seven oxygen at the left so we balance off with seven oxygen at the right as well then after that we see we have 14 hydrogen seven times so it's 14 at the left we only have one so we're going to balance it with 14 hydrogen ions after all of the elements are balanced let's look at the charges so 14 times positive 1 is 14 plus negative 2 must be equivalent to 2 times positive 3 2 times positive 3 so right hand side we have 6 and left hand side we have 12 so the difference is eventually 6 how to balance the charges is we're going to put more electrons to the one that is more positive for this case is our left hand side so to neutralize it to balance it we're going to put six electrons so that it cancel the positive and we are done this is how we write the half equations for dichromate six reduction process let us rearrange it because usually we have the substance in front and whatever the electron and hydrogen at the back looks something like this so usually flux reactions we pair up with the observations where we have the color changes for dichromate 6 in the beginning is orange in color after reductions it become green in color how you remember is dog dog dichromate 6 in the beginning is orange in color after reductions become chromium ions it becomes green in color one of the most common compound for dichromate 6 is going to be acid 5 potassium dichromate 6 solutions why is it acid 5 is because we want to have a complete reduction from dichromate 6 ions to become chromium 3 ions we don't want to have something like chromium oxide and we're going to learn how to write down the chemical formula for these solutions just now we have cr 2 7 2 minus to be a stable compound we want to get rid of the negative here so we want to add something that is positive too since we have potassium here potassium we know is only k positive so can we add two of the potassium yes so if we add two potassium it will cancel out the negative two charges so that's why we have k2 cr2 o7 as our chemical formula for these solutions and we are done for dichromatic ions next we're going to look at magnet 7 which is one of the most common oxidizing agents which is purple in color so mangan means it consists of manganese and ate means it's high in oxidation state which have the oxygen binded together so it's why we have 
M and O4. But the charges for manganese here is 7. So we can say that this is positive 7. And oxygen is a negative 2, but we have 4 of them. So 4 times negative 2, we have negative 8. So we have plus together 7 plus negative 8, we have negative 1. So this polyatomic ion, we have a net charges of negative 1. But if we undergo the process of reduction, means if we lose the oxygen, to become manganese 2. So now this is our general idea. So now we're going to just balance this equation by writing down first and look at our left and right. Since our left hand side have oxygen but right hand side have no oxygen, remember we said that we're going to use water to balance off the oxygens. So we add water to the right hand side. But after that same problems, we have no hydrogen at the left. What should we do? Plus the hydrogen ion. Then after that, we just need to balance the number of moles. So we have 4 oxygen at the left hand side, but 1 oxygen at the right. So we're going to use times 4 for balance of the oxygen. But after that, can you see that we have 8 hydrogen. 4 times 2 is 8. So at the left hand side, we only have 1 hydrogen. So we times 8 for the hydrogens. After that, we already balance off all the atoms. So now we're going to balance the charges. So we have 8 times positive 1 is 8, plus negative 1, plus negative 1, must be equivalent to positive 2 positive 2. So left hand side we have 7, right hand side we have 2, which is not balanced. The difference is going to be 5. We say that we're going to add electrons to the side that is more positive. So left hand side is more positive, we're going to add 5 electrons, like this. Then after that, we are done. We need balance of the chemical equations. But let's rearrange it like this. And just remember, after the reactions, our magnetic 7, which is purple in color, will change to become colorless. One of the compounds for magnetic 7 that we will see is going to be acid 5 potassium magnetic 7 solutions. Like just now, we want to change the negative compound to become a neutral compound. So we need to add one more positive ion to cancel out the charges. This is why we have one potassium, which is K plus adding in. So that's why we have the chemical formula of KMnO4 and neutral now, no more charges. So this is the chemical formula for these solutions and we are done for magnet 7 ion. Next, we're going to look at nitric acid. But since we are only interested in the ionic equations, so it's why we can say that HNO3 is nitric acid, but we are only interested in the and O3, which is a nitrate ions. So the nitrate ion here, we undergo reductions, which is losing of the oxygen, becomes nitrogen oxide. So this is our general idea. So we're going to balance off these chemical equations. So look at the left hand side here. Can you see that we have more oxygen at our left? So what should we do is, we're going to add water to balance off the oxygen. But like usual, after adding water, we need to balance the hydrogen with hydrogen ions. Then after that, we're going to balance the number of elements. So we have three oxygen at the left, but right hand side, we only have one, two. So how to balance off is, we're going to make it two for the water. So all together, we have now three oxygen at the right hand side and balance off already. But after that, we're going to balance the hydrogen. We have all together four hydrogen, at the left, I already have one. So we're going to add four hydrogen at the left. Then after we are done for balancing, now we go for the charges. So now we have four times positive one is four. Plus negative one must be equivalent to right hand side have no charges. So now we have three is equal to zero. So the difference is eventually three. We're going to add three electron to the more positive side, which is the left hand side for this case, like this. After that, we are done. They need to rewrite it nicely to become like this. So this one, nitrate ions become nitrogen oxide, has no color changes because both of them are colorless. Then we are done for nitric acid. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. 
click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.